Thank you. Let's formally begin our session, our first ever expert speak session for Plan to Win, season five. I welcome you. Good morning for sparing time this morning. I'm Gitanjali Kasliwal, your fitness and uh, uh, leadership accountable, super leader in Plan to Win. Uh, I really welcome from all of our sides, uh, Vijayam, Dr. Uh, Mr., uh, Mrs. Vijayam Karta, our expert speaker for the day. I welcome our founder, Darshana, our super leaders, Arun, for the productivity master, Vikas, the me meditation and visualization accountable. Uh, can you just type SL, Vikas, in the, in the chat box for all the new people and all the super leaders, please type SL in the chat box. Thank you. Uh, Shalaka, the technology accountable, Seema, communication and my fitness buddy, Uma and Rajesh for body structure and creating the space. And I welcome most of all, all the leaders for playing full out in their lives and contributing to the lives around them. And most of all, welcome to the new participants who have shown up this early, Meeta uh, and uh, many people are new. Can you type up first time, first time in the chat box if you're new here. So welcome to all the new participants and guests who have shown up this early. Uh, and you're, that being you're committed to your group. Let me share about Plan to Win uh, in a nutshell, Vijayam ma'am. Plan to Win is a space which moves you towards creating and realizing your goals. This is in a nutshell, a life management system that will give you not only strategies and techniques, but also the attitude you need to make the most of your precious time. This training will help you analyze your strengths and weaknesses, set your own priorities, manage expectations of others, and become more effective in the workplace. In a nutshell, Plan to Win helps you win yourself and win goals in your life. Now today, what have we gathered here for? Most of us come to our parents even when we have children or we don't have children. Uh, we are parents or we are mothers and fathers to people around us. Most of us come to parenting knowing nothing. No one is actually ever ready. And everyone is mostly caught off guard. Parenting chooses you. Parenthood chooses you. Even though you don't want to uh, become a parent, it chooses you. And you open your eyes and look at what you've got and say, oh my gosh. Um, you also recognize that all the balls there were. Aapke hat mein already itni sari balls hai. To ye wali ball, parenting ki ball kabhi drop ni honi chahi. And it is never a question of choice here because it's a, another cornerstone to your uh, generation. And the thing about it is somebody said that there are not no parenting rules. That's what it makes it so difficult. Also, raising a child takes a whole village. So here is a beautiful tribe of plan to win. And we have one of our experts, Vijayam ma'am, we and to in uh, to guide us on this topic. Uh, Mrs. Vijayam Kartha is an educational consultant and trainer. She is part of Initiatives of Change, a worldwide movement of people who believe that personal change leads to societal change. She strongly believes in the power of value-based quality education to transform society, as well as teachers' crucial role in nation building. During her 30 plus years career, Vijayam ma'am has redefined education in her schools. As a principal of one of the largest schools in Jamshedpur, Jharkhand, and later as a vice chairperson of Kerala Public Schools, she tried to build a harmonic balance between academics and a sense of compassion and social responsibility towards our society, environment, and ecosystem. Her activities included village development programs, rural school adoption, free education of slum children in uh, English medium school campuses during free hours, 
uh, schools for tribal girls and environment conservation activities. Her work has not only been acknowledged by the government and many NGOs, but she is also the winner of many national awards, including a President's Award. So here we have Mrs. Vijayam Kartha. Ma'am, I would invite you to please share your wisdom and wise words with all of us and create this uh, Add to the Parenting Tribe. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Gitanjali, for that uh, generous introduction. I have a bad throat. I hope you will be here with me. And uh, uh, I will be very grateful, Git, uh, Gitanjali, if you can just um, uh, tell me when the time is up, maybe two minutes before, because once I start talking, I may not look at the time. So just when it is two minutes to wind up, you can tell me. So thank you for this wonderful opportunity. I am so, uh, I feel, you know, delighted to be amongst all of you. Some of you, um, Darsana, definitely I knew from quite some time. I had met her during one conference and, and then many names, Shalaka and all those names are very uh, familiar to me attending this morning visualization sessions. So coming to the topic, um, I don't know whether I'm an expert to talk on parenting, a village girl who got married at the age of 19, who became a mother by the age of 24 to two children. And then um, I'll put myself on gallery mode so that I can watch, uh, see all of you when I talk. So uh, who became a mother to two children by the time she was 24, uh, struggled her way through parenthood. Uh, but then when I looked at my children, my own children who are in their 40s now, and my, some of my students from my school who keep telling me that I did something good for them, and my own children, when I look at them, I feel definitely my husband and I should have done something right because they are such amazing children. You know, uh, uh, an envy to any parents, uh, the way they try to, uh, you know, like um, surprise us almost every other day with their love, with their, you know, uh, um, adoration for us, make me believe that something has gone right in my parenting life. As parents, like Gitanjali rightly said, there are no like right or wrong answers or no final answers. Every parent goes through that journey in his or her own right and they have their own unique challenges. But most of the time what we do, at least in my, uh, I'm sure not only in my case, most of us uh, who are parents here, we will agree that we have involuntarily we have imitated our own parents in many ways, what we have seen as children. So that uh, reminds us the importance of being a role model. We are um, modeling some of the people whom we have met in our life most of the time. Some, uh, sometimes even the justice, the way we talk, maybe what we talk, we are borrowing from everyone. And this universe is a universe of interdependence and interconnectedness. So let me start with the importance of zero to six years of age. According to experts, this is the most crucial time for child development, the child's brain development. Uh, it's said that most of the values, attitudes are formed by the time the child is six years old. Imagine what an important phase. No wonder India, our uh, such an ancient, such a rich traditional country as ours, we knew it just before all this research came out. That must have been the reason. I still remember when we were pregnant, our parents, our grandparents used to say, don't be upset, be happy all the time. You know, don't sleep all the time read good books, you know, think good thoughts. You know, you know, every time they used to tell us because all those, those will affect, impact our child. The greatest example our scriptures talk about is that of Abhimanyu. I don't want to go into that story. We all know. So now even modern research says zero to six years is the most important uh, phase. That means the moment the child comes into your womb, 
your parenting journey starts from that moment not from the moment when the child comes into your hand no from the moment the child is in your womb you have to start talking to that baby blessing you have to bless him her you know keep talking to the child it all makes a lot of difference they say and then um keep yourself happy read good books watch good movies all these things will uh, help that baby to develop as a healthy and happy baby and once the child is born you might have noticed i remember you know like um, when i was a child we were seven siblings so my younger sister was 14 years apart from me so amma and the whole family will be talking to the baby as if she understands everything <clears throat> if somebody comes home amma will say to this uh, 10 year, days old baby look at that who has come to see you and when she was 28 days old when she was 1 year old she will keep talking look at that you know you know who is uh, who wants to uh, hold you in her uh, hand like all the time she will be talking to see that that's a crow she will be introducing uh, the baby to the whole you know ecosystem I know, as a child i used to wonder does this baby understand but in voluntary we also used to do that all siblings will be talking to that baby as if she understands everything and experts say that all these things leave you know beautiful uh, uh, images or impressions in our the baby's brain have you noticed even if you get uh, 10 15 year old baby if you start talking the child starts looking intently at you most of the time and, uh, and this is the time when the child picks up compassion kindness you know love everything so that is one thing so uh, uh, during the 0 to 8 6 years what we have to do keep talking to the child hug the child more often research says the more you hug the child the more the brain develops look at that hugging the child helps to develop the brain of the child that may be the reason see some of those children who are deprived of um, touch and uh, uh, that physical um, uh, you know uh, uh, closeness the child becomes very cranky and later on uh, grows up to be a very uh, difficult child i still remember uh, walking into this orphanage uh, mother teresa's orphanage one day and these children were all in the uh, cradles and one child was not stopped uh, crying like wailing not crying wailing and uh, you know in an orphanage so many people after some time everything becomes a little mechanical so they must have been busy i just went and stood near the cradle and i started stroking the child i still you know my heart fills with the same emotions i could see slowly the wailing stopped and the child became quiet you know every child needs that sort of an attention physical touch so that is most important thing second and third is uh, the power of stories you know once somebody asked albert einstein what should i do to make my child a genius like you so his reply was tell him stories and she said yes i will tell him stories what else should i do he said tell him more stories that is the power of stories some of us must have been very blessed to have grandparents who put us to sleep by telling us stories parents who used to tell or read stories some of you as young parents must be reading stories to your children i'm sure so stories have such power so stories are very powerful why especially before going to bed when you say don't say all those horrifying stories to your children because the children will go to sleep with those images in his mind tell them soothing stories stories of lord krishna rama and any child would love to hear stories of krishna the notiness all those things i had a child you know who had come to me he was from, he was a christian and I, we took care of him when his mother who was a doctor was away so she he was almost like my son even he, he was a christian but he would love to hear krishna stories what stories you want to hear 
he will say tell me stories of krishna so or you belong to any religion i'm sure there will be many many stories in your scriptures tell them those stories tell them good stories panchatantra all those things make your own stories go and don't ever tell them what is the moral of the story you need not ask instead you can ask which character you like did you like krishna why do you like krishna or you didn't if he says i don't like why you don't like don't be judgmental let the child think learn to be you know critical to critically analyze and all so what happens when you say these stories before going to bed the child goes to bed with those images and the whole night all such images those beautiful positive things play in his mind and you know uh, you all know as part of uh, plan to win the power of subconscious mind when we are sleeping the subconscious mind which is the aladdin's jinn wakes up and he puts all our dreams into practice so the, uh, that is the uh, most important thing we should remember we can tell stories any time of the day but before going to bed it's beautiful so this is about 0 to 6 years and once the star, child starts blabbering listen to the child and i would like to underline that sentence listen to your child why should uh, we listen uh, because if you don't listen to them when they are young they won't uh, you know talk to you when they grow up they won't share their problems when they are grow when they grow up because they know my parents are not interested to listen to me you have given them a very subtle message permanent message so what will they do when they have a problem they will go to their peers who may educate them in all wrong ways so uh, thank you uh, for those uh, darshana for those uh, points you are putting it down so uh, listening to the child is very important especially once the school reopens you know more, mostly when the children come home they come with this sentence mummy pata aaj school mein kya hua and most of the parents will say most of them i'm not saying all oh abhi अभी अभी बाद में सुनते हैं अभी पहले खाना खा लो पहले हाथ पैर धो लो पहले किताब कॉपी रख लो बाद में हम सुनेंगे बाद में कभी नहीं होता बिकॉज द चाइल्ड हेज फॉर गोटन ही इज इन दैट मोमेंट द चिल्ड्रन आर द बेस्ट एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ मेडिटेशन दे लिव इन द मोमेंट वी टॉक अबाउट बींग इन द प्रेजेंट द चिल्ड्रन आर इन द प्रेजेंट so for them that moment has gone it has gone the child will not come to you and say oh amma mummy you are free now let me tell you what happened no so don't lose that moment mummy kya pata aaj kya hua hai tell me what happened that sort of enthusiasm will help your child to confide in you throughout his life i remember when my son fell in love with a girl the first person uh, with whom he shared was with me and my husband we felt so proud that he had that sort of an openness to tell us so that sort of and then we had a uh, it's not that oh you fell in love with a god you a uh, girl and you told us we are so happy no we had an honest and detailed discussion about the pros and cons and you know all those things so very important to listen to the child now let me come to some non negotiables i feel accord as a parent i feel some are non negotiables for parenting the first one just now i said listening to your child the first thing is that which came as part of 0 to 6 years as coming as part of non negotiable second is unconditional love for your child if ever anybody asks which are the two most important parenting uh, rules i will say these two listen to your child give him unconditional love i am sure this question may pass your mind do you want to say uh, we love our children conditionally we may not be loving them conditionally but the children most of the time get that message that my parent like uh, love for me is conditional how this message gets passed for example your child comes with the report card and he has got a c grade 
and you start asking you only got to see great how much time i have spent on you you want listen yeah, you keep going on in your enthusiasm and all and then the child feels so for my mother more than me the marks are important a message well taken by the child for good or bad we know and so the child thinks that this is a conditional love the day i do good my mummy and papa will be very happy the day i do a mistake my papa and mummy will bring the whole you know world down so what what is the right way we, we should, the children should feel that you know he may fail he may commit a mistake uh, he may not do very well in studies but my position in my parents life never changes my mother and father love me for what i am who i am and the marks instead so how can we uh, reframe our sentences oh i see that you have got a c what happened the question paper was tough you did not prepare well give him a hug and ask do you need any more help from me or from the teacher should i speak to your child teacher such questions will make the child feel more comfortable the child will feel like working hard otherwise the child will feel you know itna to me am i okay now i can speak in english no should i speak in hindi also that's fine yeah so can speak in both the languages ma'am okay okay be comfortable yeah so um, so then the child will feel that okay agar mujhe kuch problem hai to main mere mummy papa ke paas ja sakte hain that sort of a confidence the child gets and the child will feel okay i have to work hard so that my parents will be happy i will be happy so second uh, rule third is uh, spend quality time with your child i know nowadays most of you are working there won't be enough time for you but the third nego- non negotiable rule is spending quality time with your child what do you mean by quality time when you are with your child keep your mobile laptop away especially these days we are looking at the whatsapp message and ah tell me tell me i'm listening you tell me it doesn't happen the child cuts because you know the child he is so innocent the processing happens of in his mind very very automatically he is he hasn't learned any he hasn't learned any uh, you know like uh, uh, that sort of um, uh, managing his behavior or thought processes and all so what uh, we have to spend quality time just sit with the child when the child is talking to you you are talking to him that is very very important and uh, there is a beautiful quote which says uh, the child who hasn't experienced love he demands for it in the most unloving ways the child who hasn't experienced uh, love in his childhood will demand it in most unloving ways experts say that most of the children, uh, teenagers who get into this uh, you know love uh, uh, you know uh, uh, infatuations and uh, sexual exploits and all most of the children when you look at them you will see that they are seeking love in all those sexual exploits also actually they don't want to commit a mistake they are seeking love and somebody who is offering love to that child the child just flows away so it's so important for us to spend quality time with our child and listen to him make him or her feel absolutely loved that is very very important third nego- non negotiable fourth one be a role model there is another beautiful quote your action speaks so loud that i can't hear your voice your actions speak so loud that i can't hear your voice so you, you may say don't tell a lie and if you are telling a very harmless lie also the child picks up the cue okay i have to tell people i have to be i have to tell people that i am honest i am kind but i need not be that i can do the opposite 
So the child learns hypocrisy and all those things from us. Be a role model. The child will emulate you. When my when I tell my children how blessed we are to have both of you in our life, they say, "Amma, uh, you know you should congratulate yourself." And "Acha, both of you should congratulate yourself for making us what we are." Their generosity, I don't believe in it. That is another thing. But then children learn from you, from us as parents. So we have to be role models. Does it mean that we have to be Gandhiji and Mother Teresa? No, we are vulnerable. Show that vulnerability in your uh, in front of your child. We commit mistakes. Tell that uh, to your child. Yes, today committed a mistake. I shouted at that maid today. I should not have done it. Tell uh, somebody else who joined the uh, the There's some disturbance in the line. फादर कैन से टूडे आई शॉटेड एट माई प्यून आई थिंक आई डिड ए ग्रेव मिस्टेक टूमोरो आई एम गोइंग टू गो एंड से सॉरी और टू द चाइल्ड today i was so angry on you i could have said the same thing in a better way i'm sorry my child so be vulnerable tell them you know whatever you are doing be open with them that is being a role model to the child the uh, fourth fifth uh, fifth one is do not label your child non negotiable many times we say you are so fat you may fall motu moti and all those things you know and then you are such a buddhu how many times i have told you kitna bar bolne se bhi dimag mein ghusta nahi hai buddhu ho kyu tum and many i don't know this generation you speak or not our generation used to say pata nahi ye tum mere pet se hi nikla ki hospital mein bacche badal gaya i don't know this you people must not be saying our generation used to say all these things so but these things have, can have great damaging impact on our children because whatever the parents say that becomes a life sentence for the child the child's uh, mind makes these affirmations i am fat i am ugly i am not good enough you know i am a stu- i am stupid and these sentences can imprison the child can be imprisoned in those sentences for their lifetime i have seen many adults even now i know many adults who are living those labels put up by uh, their teachers or by their parents or their teachers so uh, please do remember any sentence starting with that those two words i am are immensely powerful so the children should have such affirmations i am unique i am wonderful so we you people have this morning visualization and affirmations it's good to have your children join you uh, start practicing all these things and then uh, i think these are some of the non negotiables according to me and i'm coming to the last part of the cell, uh, this thing how to raise happy compassionate successful and socially responsible children <coughs> i would like to share a few research based practices okay so first and foremost i had already shared with you the more you hug the child the more the child's brain grows hugging the child can happen even into his teens even now i love to hug my children my children love to hug me it can happen in many families uh, hugging is a you know like uh, they don't feel very comfortable that is uh, one research based practice keep hugging keep uh, holding the child especially 0 to 6 year old children you know it's very very important second uh, research based practice research says if you inculcate pro social skills in your children during kindergarten again 0 to 6 years of age sorry those... ma'am can you repeat that first sentence wasn't clear 
the first was the more you hug the child, the more the brains grow. Second uh, research-based practice is cultivate pro-social skills in your children. What do you mean by pro-social skills? Pro-social skills means kindness, compassion, generosity, unconditional love, all these things come under, we, we call it values. The uh, Westerners could talk about pro-social skills. So cultivate pro-social skills in your children because studies show that if you are able to cultivate these skills when the children are young, in the kindergarten level, those children, when they grow up, they um, tend to be more successful, not only in academics, in all areas of life. So the, kind, so the title of one of those articles is Kind Kids uh, Make um, you know, healthy communities, something like that. So these children will be happier, more successful, more compassionate when they grow up. And they say the others who are not, who are deprived of these skills when they are young, they say they are the children who get into sexual exploits or drug addictions and all those things. So as parents, we have to cultivate kindness, compassion, generosity, et cetera, in our children when they are young. How can we do it? For example, if you have a maid at home, when you pay her monthly um, uh, salary, yeah, you can give it to your child, tell the child to you know, give to the uh, lady with a thank you. Thank you, auntie. And then give that uh, this thing to the child to the maid. Like we, we give Deepavali gifts to the entire staff in our security. So my children are grandchildren are away, but my sister's granddaughter stays very close to me. She is now four years. Since the last two years, we make her give this uh, Deepavali gifts. And you should see the happiness on the receivers and givers face. My, my granddaughter is thrilled because everyone blesses uh, her so the children are picking up certain values when they are. So such small things can do. Even um, asking your children to wish the security guard, the driver, the ayah at home, you know, being courteous to others. These, these small, small skills right from childhood. And you will see that every person will start blessing your child. And I have learned from my life that blessings go a long way in increasing our happiness quotient. So this is the second practice which you can start doing. Uh, I, <coughs> if you have got a senior children, uh, help the children to donate his or her books uh, to friends, uh, old clothes, old shoes, um, you know, uh, uh, help them, to inspire them to join, uh, you know, donate to NGOs, uh, use their piggy bank money for some good cause, paying someone's fees. The umpteen uh, lack of time, otherwise I could have given you more uh, such examples. Third research-based practice is parent-school partnership. Research says if the parents and school have a good partnership, the children will fare academically well and they will have a great, good character. This is research. And most of the houses, what happens? The parents criticize the school in front of the children. So the children get their feeling, even if I commit a mistake, my parents will understand that it's because of my teacher, because of my school. So you are giving a stick to your child to beat you with. So please don't ever criticize your school or teachers in front of your child. If you have a problem, tell the child, I'm going to go and discuss this problem to the school at the school with your teacher, principal, whoever it is, so that the child knows when it comes to me, the school, the teacher and my parents stay, will always stick together in my interest. That is the third one. And the fourth and last one, you all know, I need not talk about it much, the impact of mindfulness and gratitude practices. There are enough research on the internet you can see Anything, physical or mental, emotional, any ailment, uh, the two uh, prescriptions come from everyone. What is that? 
practice mindfulness practice gratitude if you do these two things it will keep many ailments away mental physical everything you know better than me it will help the children to uh, regulate their emotions etc so how do we practice it every day start with for 3 minutes 5 minutes in the morning or at night before going to bed you can have a mindfulness practice simple practice anapana focusing on your breath can be the easiest one how to practice gratitude i will feel at least one meal we should have together i remember a, once i read this newspaper article um, a news item in kolkata one family had filed for a divorce so the judge said come back to me after one month but this one month as a family you have to have at least one meal together after one month they came and they withdrew the petition for they was what have must have happened i'm sure that i salute that uh, judge who thought about it see the, the in the past we used to say the family which prays together stay together definitely that's true now the family dines together also stays together because a lot of conversation happens around the dining table morning lunch difficult at least dinner get together have a, a meal without the tv without the whatsapp just eat and that's the best time to have a gratitude practice you can model it today i'm so grateful to so and so for such and such act your uh, husband wife say mother father say then you can ask the children what are you grateful for simple practice you can start and you know that is uh, one thing which we can all do so uh, maybe just now i remembered one thing with that i stop uh, uh, when you are appreciating your child is also a non negotiable i forgot about it very important to appreciate your child so how do you appreciate oh wonderful wonderful no you have to mention what wonderful thing the child did that makes the child to repeat that act oh you were so kind i really loved it i loved the way you talked to that security guard i loved the way you smiled uh, you know at our uh, that stranger whatever so please mention the quality which you are appreciating so the child knows this is a quality which people will appreciate i can go on and on um, because, uh, thank you so yeah. much uh, so i can i'm just wanted to very, yeah, yeah i've been very comprehensive and i'm sure a lot of everyone will have uh, so many questions but one question which is coming to my mind is uh, what about teens ma'am i have a daughter who is 8 and one who is 16 one who is 18 so they're very different stages would you like to talk about in 2 minutes a lot of us have teen uh, dealing with the teenage Uh, so time. yeah thank you gitanjali so i was about to stop okay so uh, teenage itself we, i think is a um, session worth taking because th- that is the most difficult uh, thing if at all any time you need to have a session call me i'll be very happy but to just uh, teenage thing a teenage is a is a very difficult problem because uh, please remember yeah this is one thing which we should remember once we become parents we forget our own childhood am i right <laughs> we can't understand our children's teenage problem have you ever thought about our own teenage problem we also went through it not to this level you know every generation only the degree varies everything was there in every generation the degree become you know it's more severe now we were more able to suppress our feelings now they think there is no need to suppress we can be open we can do whatever we want the most important thing is to understand there are a lot of hormonal changes which are happening in our the child's body mood swings everything will be like the part of her life so what again what will help her the most if you can get the child to start a practice on meditation and gratitude it will be wonderful so how can we hook them up to if you tell them uh, uh, practice gratitude that is wonderful no it will not happen share something which you have read during your lunch uh, your dinner break uh, dinner time you can say oh you know today i read up this article about mindfulness it says it can um, uh, help you to manage your um, uh, emotions it says it can 
reverse heart ailments and it says it will make you more peaceful i never knew do you think we can start a two minute meditation every day wow. introduce like that gratitude practice today i read that this article about this gratitude practice no i never knew it has so many the say so today onwards i am going to share would you like to share the, if the children don't want to share it's okay but you share every day third thing when you read about uh, children committing suicide teenagers bring up that issue my goodness today i read about this teenager committing suicide what do you have to say and this is the reason according to him what do you have to say what do you think about it mm. you get to know the child's mind <coughs> fourthly ask your children to bring their friends home so you will get to know many parents say don't bring your friends home no let them bring their uh, friends home so that you have a look at them you know them you know and try to make friends with your children's pr- friends parents have some sort of a communication so that you it becomes a co you know like co parenting like so that i i know my grandson is 18 and my daughter and he he has got two thick friends so those three parents also are also very close and they are in the us but you won't believe these three i have seen that they are the three most innocent and loving children so much of love they are getting from these three families attention so they don't need uh, attention and love anywhere else so these are some of the things which you can uh, think of if anybody else has got any idea ma'am ma'am my one ma'am, question ma'am, is um, that i want to share one question yeah. uh, what to teach the daughter who is recently married hmm. pardon what to uh, what to teach to your daughter who is recently married so the te- a child who has already married ask her to read something on parenting and all you know, you see these days just type in the uh, google you will get one minute read two minute read three minute read ask her to read some uh, good uh, you know articles on parenting and all tell her to me one thing is you know my my uh, what do we say law for life whatever be the question love is the answer wow. i repeat this is you... not my sentence this is attributed to dalai lama somebody says when there who are it is whatever be the question love is the answer tell your daughter that tell your daughter to win the hearts of their in laws through her love and attention and kindness you uh, treat the your in laws as their own parents i used to tell my daughter when she got married i don't mind if you don't look after me but you can't you know uh, be disrespectful to your in laws you have to take care of them first <coughs> so these things will make her you know position very important in the in laws um, house and i i think i i remember my one of my nephews i just you know adore him the first day the first night when he got married he said one sentence to his wife you don't look after me that's okay with me but i won't tolerate if you don't look after my parents that will make me very upset very sad so i see they are married now since the last 10 years so what a beautiful bonding the mother in law and the daughter in law has wow <coughs> Can I say something now? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I uh, please. Your questions are welcome. Arun, you also had uh, raised your hand. And uh, Seema, please go and next. Arun can kindly raise your hands before you speak. Thank you. Arun wants to go. Yeah, Seema, please go ahead. Yeah, Vijaya, ma'am. Thank you so much for your wonderful, wonderful insights for parenting. I mean, I felt I have been going through all of that unknowingly. I have been doing all of that. I still remember that somebody asked me, I mean, why do you want to be a homemaker? I said, I don't know. After marriage, I said, I know when the child comes home, I want to be there with the child. every time when he should look up there is someone to talk to so communication plays a very important role in other relationships i mean the way you communicate the way with your with the child 
it makes uh, the happy childhood goes a long way so i really i mean i'm thankful i mean when i realized all what you said i said i have been going all through and i remember when i had been to my the school of my son and uh, principal i mean he came down i mean yeah, do you have a question here for everyone right no, now so the question if you would like to say ki uh, how how do you deal with the with the conflict in the household if it's there so how does it affect the child uh, the child's mind like how does uh, you explain it to him or how what are the how does it affect to him wow what That's a, a pertinent question, question. Uh, yeah masima uh, the household conflicts i i'm sorry I, i'm so happy you brought it household conflicts affect the children and damage their personality in a great way in many cases there are some children who will come unscathed after all that turmoil but 98% of the time parent um, uh, parent uh, conflict between parents conflict between the grandparents and parents all these things will affect the children by because they don't know how to respond or react and they go through that pain in their this thing so we have to be very careful what we can do see there can't be uh, like uh, many relationship there will be conflicts can we have a good conversation around it with the children don't be scared if you and your husband have an argument and don't, don't be scared you know both of us have this argument and you know we will come around again so don't be uh, bothered about it but at the same time as far as possible try to avoid it now i can say that at my younger age i have also done it sometimes i used to have some arguments with my husband but one thing i can tell you in all our life we have never gone to bed you know like without talking or if there is a an argument it's argument done over it's over but many families it you know prolongs after two days the wife won't talk to the husband then the husband has to go and say sorry and all or vice versa so maybe can be resolve it quickly for our children say and don't go to bed with a fight another reason is we don't know what is in store for our next moment let's keep you know a light baggage so conflict has to be resolved at the earliest and again the question is whatever be the what the thing is whatever be the question love is the answer if you apply this rule everything will change Thank you so thank much. You, thank, thank you so much, Ujjama. Thank you, Seema. That was a lovely question. Uh, Shamila, you had a question, or maybe Arun. We'll take one or one more question. Uh, Shamila, did you have? Did you do you want to unmute your unmute yourself? Yes. Um, I didn't have a question. Um, I didn't have a question, but I just wanted to say. uh that uh, i after listening to uh, vijay ma'am i remember that uh, yeah our parents were not all that excellent parents looking back because they did make mistakes they did label but they must have done something very right because we still remember them and we thank them for what they have done so thank you so much vijay ma'am lovely lovely thank talk thank you thank you uh, arun <coughs> one last question yeah sure so thank you Uh, so i have a two year old kid and uh, you know right now we are in pandemic so th- there is work from home so i usually open my laptop and start working but he really many a times he really get frustrated he comes to me and he slams the laptop okay oh. he causes the laptop uh, you know flap so i get it that he is really uh, you know frustrated so how do you know so how do i because i can't now separate work and time with him so how do i deal with this i know i i really understand what must be happening so what can we do maybe uh, see some some of us spend the, our time uh, the whole day in front of the laptop first of all uh, do you belong to that category yes then there, uh, so so you have to find time and a two year old child i told you the more you hug the more you play the more you talk to the child you will not have teenage problems please remember that so what you have to do um, morning definitely spend half an hour 45 minutes with exclusively with your child and then you say now papa has to go to work and now 
pup you can play with your toys same way in the evening spend time so the child knows papa will spend some time with me in the morning in the evening some if the your wife can also do the same thing but at the same time there should be some point of the time when three of you can sit and play together talk together maybe even 5 minutes to 10 minutes also will do this can be one way if you can afford you can have a maid who, like my niece what she does my daughter in law who is here my, my sister's daughter in law what she does she employs a, a girl she is work, she works from home so she employs a girl for 2 3 hours no need to spend the whole day so 2 3 hours this maid takes care of the child plays with the child that also is a if you can afford that can be another way to do it but otherwise then can you hold the baby and um, you know, work wonderful i have seen that also sometimes people do you know put the child in the lap and work for some time do it there is no rule as such arun like your you know your child should feel that love from you flowing to uninterrupted to your child i think that's all the child will understand thank you thank you so much vidyam ma'am and uh, darshana and nilanshu you posted some questions we'll uh, surely uh, give it to vidyam ma'am and ask for their and post it on the group and all the summary will surely be posted on the group for the lack of time uh, i just wanted to I uh, share that this is uh, now 7:26 ma'am i'd like to really thank you and invite uh, our founder darshana to please share the vote of thanks yeah so thank you so much ma'am uh, and you know what a what a day tomorrow we are celebrating teachers day and we could have you we had you uh, in your in our mind since last month we wanted to invite you for this special day because uh, i understand which a ma'am parenting is not only biological it is behavioral as well yeah and we as teachers are always demonstrating um, parenthood to our students and which am ma'am the the uh, you know the sentence that caught my attention when we were together for four days is your actions speak so louder i cannot hear what you are saying then the way you said this has like gone deep into my heart actions speak so louder so really really being very very um, watchful of my actions when i am a parent when i am a teacher when i am a colleague thank you for teaching me that and giving me spoken by somebody but thank you for that and uh, vijay ma'am also i want to acknowledge you for you know really speaking for such a long time you have been so uncomfortable i could you know see that uh, you have given your So two hundred percent to this gathering, and also offering to come back to speak on a very special topic on teenage parenting, and I'm sure that all of us want to hear you again. And you know, uh, this we cannot get. I mean, I cannot get enough of you. Um, thank you so much for this uh, loving persona that you have. Uh, I'm sure that there have been challenges for you and uh, the. the way you are contributing to us and contributed to people like 30 people were here taking all that you had said and they are going to dine together i'm sure because this is something that we miss you know in the fast paced world this is something very easy and very doable and this is going to bring a lot of difference in our life i'm sure so i'm really uh, and you know bringing that point again the family which dines together stays together so this is something which is very very doable So Vijay ma'am uh, thank you once again for being here Raj Rajalakshmi ma'am your sister she is another <laughs> shadow of you so thank you Rajalakshmi ma'am for being with us each and every person who is here we would want you to get your uh, so that we can keep you posting about the expert sessions so Gitanjali can you share the contact form once more please can i just take one minute uh, uh, and this uh, milan shu please feel free to call me up and any one of you if i can be of any help to you please feel free to give me a call my number is there with uh, uh, darshana gitanjali vikas and all so uh, that will be absolutely fine and thank you for the nice words um, raji and all. thank you thank you thank you so much gitanjali thank you so much for inviting me just share the form in the link a chat box please all of you who are new would love to in fact everyone can fill in right now take 2 minutes and with this uh, it's 7:30 
let's end Gitanjali. our visualization. Gitanjali, would you like to uh, say who is coming next time and then we can close so people can. Uh, we are next Saturday. Please be here. We are having Nita, Nita Mathur. Uh, she is an expert in communication. Please be here to brush up on the communication skills. And once you fill the contact form, there will be slightly change in the time. We will inform you that. So let's get into our visualization session. Thank you yes. so much. Thank and you. And we'll see you every Saturday. Yeah, Nilanshu, we can communicate on uh, asking Vijayam ma'am. I will so share the number with Nilanshu. Facilitate Thank that. You. Not a problem. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank yeah. you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much.